we get some ideas from uh, books like these. Do you know where I got this idea? Yeah, from that book. I know you got that. Where? Cinderella. Oh, well. Cinderella, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of like stories, fairy tale stories, isn't it? Yeah. Now, actually, I heard a story called The King with a Terrible Temper, and I, I didn't like it because it was, I didn't like many parts of it. So I took the idea, and I changed the story quite a bit, but I kept some of the parts of the story. So I took that story and revised it and changed it. Have you ever heard of stories that have like two or three versions of it? Yeah. Like Cinderella has many different versions and Snow White has many different versions. Well, I wrote a different version because I didn't like the first one. So that's another place where you can get your ideas from stories that have already been written. Are, um, the, are those pretty much the same characters as the book you read? And actually, it was a story I heard and they are, although the characters are completely different. In the, the king with a terrible temper is still terrible, but the daughters were skinny daughters. One was a skinny daughter, one was a fat daughter, and one was a beautiful daughter. And I thought, well, that's terrible. I mean, why wouldn't anybody feel bad about skinny and fat? I mean, that's ridiculous. So I, I didn't want that. I wanted to change that because I didn't like those ideas. And then the knights, they were, they got, they won the princess over by killing. And I thought, oh no, there's another bad thing to tell kids. You get the girl by killing other people. And that's terrible too. So I changed the story quite a bit to make it more nonviolent. Yes? Do you do all the drawings? Yes. Yeah, they're not very good. I can probably tell. <laughs> Uh, in this third book that I'm just going to tell you about, I'll tell you about parts of it. I was in Mexico when I was in college. It was many years ago, probably 20. And uh, there was something happened that was very dangerous. Was there a gunfight? It's called danger. In, actually, I have. You know, that's good that you mentioned it because I have a great story about a gunfight too <coughs> that happened in Mexico. Do you have one? I mean, have you ever seen a gunfight in person? Well, that, there you you got something to write about that. Danger in Mexico. And this was, here's the ocean here. Here's a hotel and the beach. And I used colored pencil. And then, have you ever seen the watercolors that kind of, actually, what I think I did was I drew, and then I put some water uh, color, or I put a brush on there to wash out. Again, I have a title page, Danger in Mexico, written by Glenn DeVoe for Tom. Now, Tom's my brother, so I wrote the first one for my wife. Uh, my second one for my brother, Tom, who was a wild and crazy guy. And this is a wild and crazy story, so I thought, I'll write it for him. Mr. Yes? So, like, your wife is kind of like a princess, right? Yes. <laughs> exactly. You got the... Yeah, right. <laughs> Copyright by DeVoe Publishing. Again, I just call myself, my own publishing company, Pinecrest School, East Lansing, Michigan. Ah, Mexico. Sunny beaches, swimming pools, palm trees. Our Spanish class was on the bus to Tecolutla in the Gulf of Mexico. And I was looking forward to a Saturday of drinking pineapple juice in a chase lounge chairs by the pool. But our Spanish professor had different ideas. He wanted us to go to see the Mayan pyramids in the middle of the steamy jungle. Then, in the middle of the day, when the sun was the hottest, our professor had planned to tour the city from a hot, sweaty school bus. I didn't want to be hiking around in sweat-drenched long pants and a shirt in Mayan ruins. Basically, our day was ruined in the ruins. At least, though, we could get up early and take a run on the beach. That would be fun. Bob and Teresa agreed to go with me at 6.30 for a run. We dragged ourselves slowly out of bed and ran down the stairs of the old white hotel. We passed the pool and came to the beach and started running along the water's edge. We went running for a little bit when all of a sudden we came upon a river. The river seemed to be 
a, a great deal wider now that we had gotten close to it. And it got deep right at the edge of the river. What do you think, I asked Teresa, squinting as we surveyed the sun shining off of the river. We can either swim across, so we have been jogging down the river. We can either swim across the river and then keep jogging on the other side or we could just turn around and keep jogging on the beach. I thought of swimming across the river and running on the other side and felt intrigued. I kind of felt like Tarzan running through the jungle. Nothing could stop us. Let's go, it would be fun. I don't know, said Bob. <clears throat> I knew if we stood around and discussed it, I wouldn't get my way. Come on, I said, as I dove into the deep water. Teresa hesitantly dove into the water after me. Bob, being much more cautious, started wading in. By the time he was swimming, we were already a quarter of the way across the river. Wondering how much practice swimming she had had, I asked Teresa, have you ever taken lessons? I got my lifeguard certificate a couple years ago, but I haven't done much swimming since then, she replied between strokes. Teresa was coming slowly, so I switched to the side stroke so I could watch her and let her catch up with me. I saw Bob had turned around and was wading out of the water to the shore. He seemed, it seemed that the shore was quite a distance now. The river current had continued to flow into the ocean. Being in the river, we flowed out into the ocean with the current. By this time, we were several hundred yards flowing out into the ocean. I looked at Teresa, who was still doing the crawl. You know what the crawl is? This kind of swing. And breathing a little heavy. How you doing? I asked her a little concerned. Bob turned back. If you're getting tired, we could go back too. I quickly realized we were in trouble when I saw Teresa's face. She stopped swimming the crawl and started swimming in place. Teresa's motions were jerky and almost frantic. Now we were in trouble. We were a long way from shore for a person who was fatigued, who was tired. Her face was red and she gasped for breath, spitting water out each time she said a word. I don't know. She gulped a mouthful of water and coughed. Which way is shorter? Well, we're about in the middle, I said realizing that I might have to save her if we got in trouble. I shuddered as I imagined what would happen if Teresa got a mouthful of water. Her mouth was getting closer and closer to the edge of the water, and her agitated strokes splashed water in every direction. I could tell that she was trying not to get too hysterical, but the situation forced us to consider our fate. The situation turned from bad to worse. I looked around and I noticed Teresa and I had drifted out with the current into the ocean. We were going further and further out into the ocean. Oh, what bad luck. I turned around to suggest to Teresa that we turn around when my heart dropped. About 20 miles up, 20 meters upstream from us, I saw two gray fins come out of the water. Probably somebody taking both fins were traveling at the same silent speed. I sensed an air of confidence in the way they swam in comparison with Teresa's and my jerky swimming motions. I was frozen at first, not being able to say a thing. I opened my mouth wide and tried to catch my breath. My heart pounded like the beat of a kettle drum. Teresa, let's go back, I breathed heavily. I just saw two sharks up the river. Just as I said that, I realized that I had said the wrong thing. Teresa, who was already exhausted, became frenzied. Now breathing even harder, she asked, What? Nothing. <laughs> I tried to find out if she had understood me or didn't want to believe me. Did, did you say shark? She returned, still trying to catch her breath. 